So I have an uh, Anycubic i3 Mega S and as you can see I've removed the screen from mine. I would like to customise the screen in some way, whether that be as simple as changing the theme and trying to make it look and feel a bit more with the colour scheme I'm going for, because I'm that sad, or to try and add new features um, to customise the, the firmware to do something with it. The the S models come with these the the Degas or Degas screens, but they are customised by any cubic, and thus they are locked. You can't reflash them. I think that's probably the case for all the screens that come in the models before these. Some of which are standard Degas screens, but can be also locked. Um, so the first thing I need to do is obtain a new screen because this can run the standard any cubic firmware no problem, but it can give us no more other than that. So let's get ourselves a different screen. So here we have the old screen and a new replacement screen side by side. Um, ignore the extra holes because I'll go into detail on why they're needed. Um, the exact model of this that I've got, um, we have the model there. It's a DMT48320 CO3506W. Um, you can get them on AliExpress for around $24. I would recommend you get the all the extra accessories with it, which includes um, the serial adapter. This allows you to sort of power it from your computer and do a bit of debugging if need be. Just just kind of useful. Not necessary, but, but a worthwhile addition. To compare these two screens, so this is the original screen. And we can see that it's got a connector block for connecting to the printer's main board. Um, SD slot and that there's two holes on each corner for mounting. If we compare this to the the new screen you can see that the, the SD cards mount in a different area. This I, I've soldered these headers on, these are not on here standard but you can see that this is where the connector block is on the standard one. Um, bar that they are pretty much the same screen. It's just this is a slightly customized version made by Anycubic. If we look at what pins we're going to be using, it's obvious on the offset that um, on here they're labelled slightly differently. So we have ground, we have 5 volt, and we have various TX and RX pins. On the original, we have VSS, which is basically ground, 5 volt, and then um, RST, which is a reset pin. I don't think we need that and just a single RX and TX pin. And that would mean that although this is capable, and looking at documentation, I know that to be the case, of, of running two different TX RX interfaces, only one of them are used, thus why this original, or this original any cubic screen, is only using one of them RX TX channels. So what we need to do is figure out what one is being used um, and what one isn't. So the next thing that I had to do was to try and match the footprint. Now this is only the case for the S, it might not be the same for the others, but it uses the inner holes as opposed to the outer holes to match. So I had to line the screens on top of each other and just mark out where the hole's gonna be. Now that, these screen, this is slightly longer, you'll see that it's ever so slightly longer than the, the new screen. Thus these holes are gonna be slightly off. So when I've drilled them, you can see that they all sit slightly off the board. It's not going to be a problem, it's still going to bolt down fine, still fits in the gap fine, um, but we need them holes, otherwise we can't mount using bolts. We'd probably use double-sided tape to fit them, but not quite the same. So now we have it prepared pretty much to go in. Um, I'm going to work on uh, getting it to actually connect an interface to the printer. So for connecting to the printer, I'm just going to use jumpers. Um, I've got male to female because the they're going to need to fit into the because this is male. They're going to need female and female to fit on these and male to fit on the other end. So in order to match them up, um, I've already looked at the colours and I can see, for example, that the five volt on this side is pretty much in the same place and it uses a green. So all I'm going to do is attach the green onto there, the yellow, which is the ground, onto there, and then we're just going to mix and match the other two to try and find the TXRX pins, and we should hopefully get the screen alive and working. So I've already matched up the wires, and I know from prior testing that it's the outside RX pins, so we're looking at RX4 and TX4 
are the ones that the printer does interface over RX um, and TX2 are not used. I have put um, some firmware which I found online which is the standard um, firmware from another model not the S but from another one um, which I've put on the SD card to flash to it so we're gonna we've got it all plugged in that's going into the connector block that the screen did go into so we should now turn this on and it should now flash right, it's gonna do some stuff we'll come back once it's finished flashing so we've now finished flashing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the SD card out turn the printer off And hopefully we'll boot into our new version of the software and it will interface with the printer correctly. So far so good. Yeah, picking up the temperatures of the hot end. And yep, that all appears to be doing what it should be. So now um I'm going to try and see if I can customise this firmware just a little bit before I bolt it in and come up with some way that I can constantly try and flash different versions to it as we go. So let's um, let's do a bit a few changes and we'll see what we can, we can make this look like. So this is my slightly customised version. All I've done is run a few Photoshop batch jobs. The standard firmware is just made up of a load of um, bitmap files and various uh, customised bits. So let's see if it works. <coughs> And there we go. So some of these, like this bit here, they're all run by icon icon files, um, which are like many bitmaps in one. So I still need to go through and change some of them. But we have basically a new theme. Some of the buttons still need doing, obviously. But yeah, it, it works, and it matches matches the colour of this a bit more. So this is more of an experiment just to make sure that you can flash and make changes. Hopefully I could have a go at remaking this entirely, adding new features, adding new bits. Um, I know a lot that's been done with other brands of printer, but what I'll do is we'll, we'll install this and we'll see what it looks like. So here we are. We've got it fitted. Um, it's kind of straight. I had to make some alterations to the firmware because the way this screen mounts is almost opposite to how it should be so I had to rotate it to be the other way around um, but now it's all in it's all fine it does mean the SD cards in a slightly better place but yeah we now have a theme that matches matches this obviously it thinks it's a format pro but it's all there so from here, um, I'll probably get these last few buttons to be orange. And then start working on maybe a completely custom one, adding a few new buttons. So we'll see. But yeah, that's how you can customise your screen. I'll upload the firmware, the, alter, the altered firmware that I've, I've used here, um, onto GitHub and put a link in the bottom.